Hi guys, welcome back to uh, another school year here at Westside High School, 2022-2023. Whether it's your first year or your last year, we, we're glad to have you and ready to get rocking and, and rolling with a, a, a great school year. Uh, do want to run through a few things. I know some of you are saying you've seen this video before and, and you don't need to pay attention, but there are some changes. So I want you to pay attention. Uh, we'll try to make it as quick as possible. We'll run through it. At Westside High School, we do have seven limits it should be posted up in your teacher's classroom uh, six of those result in automatic referrals or, or, or being sent to an administrator and then we'll talk about the the other one last uh, the first one is physically injure yourself or threaten to, to injure someone else this can be slap boxing threatening to fight horseplay arguing those sorts of things will result in an automatic referral uh, the second one is discrimination against others making fun of the way somebody dresses or the way they read or the way they speak anything like that would be an automatic referral um, the third one would be damage or destroyed materials uh, breaking your keyboard you're all going to get brand new chromebooks at some point this week so messing with the with the chromebook anything like that um, the next one is stealing from others this can be personal property cell phone shoes it can also be intellectual property answers on a test things like that um, imposing on others this can be forcing somebody to do their homework for them or forcing them to let you cut in the lunch line or anything like that would be considered imposing your will on others and would result in an automatic referral um, the last one that's an automatic referral is representing to uh, representing misrepresenting to others this would be lying about staying after school or forging a pass or, or something of that nature where you're misrepresenting your identity or what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, the last one, which we, we deal with most often, uh, is interference with others. That's interfering with other people's in the class's ability to learn or interfering with the teacher's ability to teach in the classroom. This can be tapping on your desk, singing, talking across the room, throwing a piece of paper at somebody. Those sorts of things that interfere with the classroom experience will result in number one you get a warning number two you get a teacher detention and then on the third one they're going to hit the button and have security come escort you out of the class to to an administrator so just keep in mind that first one is a warning just to get you redirected nothing happens if you correct your behavior the second one is a teacher detention which they'll arrange with you and the third one you're being removed from class and if you continue to be removed from class, then your your number of warnings goes down to one. It's one warning and then you're removed. By that time, we probably put you on a behavior contract and kind of talk through that with your parents, but we don't really get that far with most, but I want you to be aware of that situation. One transition into what a, what a typical day at Westside High School will look like. Um, for the most part, the building opens up at 7.30. Uh, if you arrive, uh, as a bus rider, you're going to come down the Ram hallway. There'll be a person out there to greet you. Uh, come down the Ram hallway, and then you'll be housed in the cafeteria until 8:10. Um, if you get dropped off behind the school, uh, you'll come up that that walkway, and then you'll also enter the cafeteria. There'll also be someone out there. You'll stay in the cafeteria until 8:10, and then be dismissed to your first block. If you are um, in the front circle. You're going to come over by the 200 building. Um, there will be signs out there the first day to kind of show you where to go. But Ms. Burton will be over there to greet you uh, as you come in the 200 building. You guys will go down the 200 hall and then you'll enter into the commons area and stay there. Um, if you're, so if you're a car rider in the 200 up the hall into the commons area. Uh, if you're a driver, obviously you're going to be in the, the student parking lot. That auxiliary gym door is not going to be unlocked until 7.50. So just, just be aware of that as you drive in. Um, if you get here earlier, you're more than welcome to walk around, but we won't open that door until 7.50. Um, if you arrive after 8.10, you're still going to go to your first block class even though you're considered tardy. Okay? Um, 8.10, 8.20, 8.20, you're, I mean, 8.20, you're supposed to be in your seat. I'm sorry, I, I got confused on that one. From 8.10 to 8.20 is your opportunity to get to your first block class. If you come in after 8.20, we still want you to report to your first block class. Uh, if you come in after 
you're going to have to go to the front and get a pass. And I'll talk about tardies more in a minute, but um, the breakfast lines in the cafeteria are open until 8 o'clock. The breakfast in the commons will be open until we get our last bus in. So if we've already dismissed from the cafeteria, you can still go get breakfast, but you'll have to get it from the commons area, especially those of you that may ride a late bus. Take your late bus pass over there so, so that you'll be able to get breakfast. Now, do keep in mind that breakfast and lunches this year are back to pay. So if you haven't filled out a free or reduced form, make sure you get that in. You never know what you'll qualify for, but go ahead and put those in so you can find out. All right. Uh, once you get into class, first block, uh, 8.20 to 9.50 is first block, business as usual. At 9.45, those of you that have Southwood second block, those students need to go to the bus parking lot to catch that bus. So at, at 9.45, you'll catch the bus over to Southwood. From 9.50 to 10.10, we will have advisory. Um, we'll have some more information to follow about what advisory entails and what we're going to do each day. Uh, it's going to be pretty structured in, in what you're allowed to do. Uh, at 1010, students will transition to their second block class. You've got to be in your seat by 1015 or you're considered tardy. And then second block will run from 1015 to 1145. Uh, at 1140, this is a big change. Last year, AIT and Southwood kids got out during advisory time, but we've moved advisory this year. So if you have AIT or Southwood, um, for third block, then you're going to be dismissed at 1140 to go beat the lines to the cafeteria. Only those students that have AIT in Southwood. Um, you guys go eat, and then we'll make an announcement for you to get on your bus. Southwood has to be up there at 1153, uh, and uh, AIT is 1155. For everybody else, you get dismissed at 1145 to go to your, to your third block class. Uh, if you have a class that is in the 200 or 300 building, you will have first lunch and you'll go directly to lunch. Now, I know some of you get confused about the lunches. Your teachers will go over that with you if you have questions. So 200, 300 building, when you're dismissed to third block, you'll go directly to the lunchroom. Uh, if you have a class in the academy, then you will go to class from 1150 to 1235. You'll have lunch. You'll report back and finish up class from 1.15 to 2. If you have a class in the English building uh, or the 600 building, then you will have third lunch. So you will go directly to your class. You'll have class from 11.50 to 1.25, and then you'll go to lunch to finish out. At 2 o'clock, everybody gets dismissed to their last class, their fourth block class. Um, 2.05, you're tardy and then you'll have regular class, and then we dismiss at 3.40. Um, at dismissal, at the end of the day, if you're a bus rider, make sure you know what your holding classroom will be. All of those classrooms are on the 200 and 300 hallway. We have signs up if you need to take a picture on your phone. Same thing with the bell schedule. There's signs up, so just take a picture so you can, until you become more familiar with exactly what those times are. If you're a bus rider, you got five minutes to report exactly to your to your bus holding area. There'll be people up there to help you out the first couple of days, and then you'll be expected to know where to go. If you're a car rider um, and you're getting picked up in the front, make sure you go to the front circle. You know, if you're getting picked up off Jackson Street, you, you'll you'll head to that direction. Um, the buildings will be locked down after about the first five minutes, so make sure you get to where you're supposed to go. If you're a driver or you ride with um, someone who's, who's driving to school, then you'll head up to the, the student parking lot. Um, I want to run through those buses real quick. So if you do ride a bus, you might want to pay attention now and, and, and make sure you write down where you go. If you ride bus 4, bus 7, bus 20, 21, or 22, you'll report to the 300 lab. Bus 23 will report to classroom 312. 24 will be in 313. 25, 314. 26, 315, 28, 316, 29, 318, 31, 319, and 32, you'll be in 320. If you ride the higher bus numbers, 43, 44, 45, 47, 50, and 51 will be in the AV room. 34 will be in room 212, 36, 213, 37, 215, 38, 216, 40 to 17, 41 to 18, and 42 will be in 220. Um, 
One of the biggest changes that we're, we're going to go through this year is wearing IDs. So every student has to have an ID to be on campus. Your ID has to be a world worn around your neck and it has to be on your outside. You can't wear your ID and put a jacket over it or a hoodie. It has to be visible the whole time that you're here. So there, there, there may be days where you forget your ID. What do you do if you forget your ID? At all of the locations where you can enter in the mornings, there's either an administrator or a staff member there who will have a temporary ID. Um, they're gonna take your name, issue the ID, and then you'll be able to wear that ID for the day. At the end of the day, you need to take that, that uh, temporary ID to the media center. And the reason being, if you turn your ID in at the end of the day, and you don't get charged anything. We're, we're not trying to run up your, your school accounts or anything like that, but if you don't turn it in, then Ms. Warner is gonna charge your account $3. So we know there's gonna be times where you may forget your ID, but we want you to get it early that morning as you come in, and then you have it for the rest of the day, and then just turn it back in. If you lose your ID or something like that comes up and you need another ID, then you can purchase one for $5. Obviously, everybody is gonna get an ID for free, first block, um, and those of you that may have enrolled late or something like that, we'll take care of you on an, on an individual basis. But make sure that you take care of that. Teachers will have IDs. If you come after um, 8.30 and you go sign in the front office, the front office will have an ID, but you, you have to have those in. Uh, and, and another big point of emphasis is dress code. Uh, we were pretty lax over the past couple of years because we didn't want kids going home, especially with all the quarantine for teachers and students and all that was going on. But we're kind of back to uh, as normal a year as we possibly can. So things like sunglasses and hoodies and uh, do-rags and you know short shirts that show off midriff and pajamas and things like that, all that's going by the wayside. So it will be addressed. Make sure you dress for success as you come every single day. If you're in doubt of length of a skirt or uh, whether the sleeve's long enough or something like that, just wear something else so, so that you don't have to deal with being pulled out and calling somebody to get a change of clothes or, or using the clothing closet or you know something like that. Last thing we're going to do is uh, run through the handbook test. Um, there's a couple different questions on here. So, so I know some of you have seen most of this before. It's pretty similar. Not a lot of rule changes, but there have been some changes. Um, I will note this. The first two questions I made a typographical error on. I'm going to go through those. So number one, Bus riders and students dropped off behind the school before 750 must report directly to the cafeteria. That one is, that one is correct. Um, student drivers dropped off in the front circle prior to 750 must report to the commons. So um, number three, upon the 750 bell, that, there's where my error was. So that should be 810. You get dismissed from your holding areas at 810. I apologize for the error. Upon the, the, the 810 bell, students will not be allowed to hang out in the hallways, roll in the hallways, stand against the wall, or talk to their friends. They must go directly to their first block class. Failure to comply will result in disciplinary action. All right, number four. Students are considered tardy to school if they are not in their blank when the bell rings. C, you got to be in your seat when the bell rings. Student arriving on campus may not leave campus unless they are properly signed out in the front office. Once a student arrives on campus, they are prohibited from leaving. Students may not be signed out after 315. Number six, students caught hanging in the parking lot during school hours without administrator approval will be considered out of area. Out of area. You can't be in the parking lot during the day and will be subject to disciplinary action. Number seven, students dismissed from school early because of a reduced coursework are required to leave the school premises. Students that are dismissed early and caught on campus 10 minutes after dismissal will be placed in an additional course or receive disciplinary actions. You seniors that have early dismissal or late arrival, you guys earned it because you passed all the classes that you needed to. Don't come early, don't stay and hang around, or we're gonna have, have to find a class to put you in. Number eight, the following clothing items will not be permitted inside the building of Westside High School. Do rags, bandanas, sunglasses, large chains, items advertising, alcohol or tobacco, narcotics, profane language, weapons, 
and or suggestive slogans, pictures, and or offensive materials, gang symbols, fish hooks, multi-fingered rings, studded bracelets or collars, nose to lip to ear chains, sleeveless tops and shirts, clothing that is see-through, provocative, or suggestive, and sagging pants. You guys know what you should wear and what you shouldn't. Just make sure you adhere to those rules. Number nine, dresses, skirts, and pants cannot show skin above the knee. Number 10, shirts, t-shirts, blouses, or dresses that have sleeves and do not show cleavage, backs, midriffs are allowed at West Side. Number 11, bedroom shoes and pajamas are not allowed at West Side High School. Like I said, dress for success. Don't, don't show up in your pajamas. Number 12, saggy pants or undergarments that show while on school campus, before school, during school, or after school would not be tolerated. No sagging pants, don't want to see your undergarments. 13, cell phones confiscated from the classroom will be sent to the front office. Upon the first cell phone offense, the student will be allowed to pick up the cell phone. Upon the second offense and thereafter, the parent's going to be required to pick them up. While in the classroom, the cell phones are not being utilized for academic instruction, excuses such as, I was just looking at the time, will be considered a violation of the cell phone policy and result in the cell phone being taken or confiscated by the teacher. If you're not, being, if you're not using it for instruction, keep, keep it away. Uh, number 15, refusal to surrender a cell phone to school officials upon the request of the teacher will result in three days of ISS. If it's your first time, give it up. You're gonna go get it at the front office at the end of the day. Otherwise, you're giving it up for three days straight anyways while you're in ISS. So don't make it a big deal. Give it up to the teacher. Number 16, students are solely responsible for any personal cell phones or devices that they bring to school. Administration at Westside High School will not search for lost or stolen cell phone devices. Keep them on your personal phone. Don't leave your cell phone on your desk to go get water. Don't leave it just sitting in the gym while you're shooting basketball in a book bag. Make sure you lock those up. They are very expensive devices. All right, uh, number 17. Distribution of indecent materials is a disciplinary offense. These materials include, but are not limited to, photographs, videos, text, or other visual methods containing images of a sexual nature or exposing one's sexual organs or transmitting sexually suggestive material to others within the school environment. Number 18, the possession and use of alcohol or illicit drugs is prohibited on school grounds or at any school-sponsored event. I think that goes without saying, no alcohol, no drugs while you're on school campus. Uh, students are not allowed to play cards, dice, or other games of chance while on campus unless they are being integrated by the teacher as a part of the lesson. Students who are card playing dice or cards will have them confiscated and be subject to disciplinary action. Uh, number 20, any student in the hallway during class must possess an official school hall pass. Make sure you have one of the red passes or the black passes or one of the yellow emergency passes from your teacher if you're leaving for any reason. Unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or other inappropriate oral, written, or physical conduct of a sexual nature when made by a student or staff member to another student or staff member constitutes sexual harassment. By 22, no student may possess, use, or distribute an object, device, or instrument that has the appearance of a gun, including, but not limited to, Anything that looks like a gun, water guns, toy guns, replica guns, BB and pellet guns, uh, and objects that are the facsimile of a weapon. Any of that will result in an automatic recommendation for expulsion. You cannot have that on campus. 23, while on school grounds, in school buildings, on buses, or at school related functions, students will not possess any capable any item capable of inflicting injury or harm to persons on property. No vehicles parked on school may contain firearms, knives with a blade of 2.5 inches or more, blackjacks, razors, or other items which are generally considered to be weapons. You cannot bring that stuff to school. 
You cannot bring knives to school. Anything over 2.5 inches in your car is against the federal law. So you cannot have that stuff on campus whatsoever. Same rules that apply at school also apply on the bus. That is true. All, number 25, all medication must be properly labeled in its original container and brought to the nurse. She's the one that gives out medication, so make sure you bring it to the nurse when you arrive at school. Further, prescription herbal homeopathic medication must be brought to the school in the container labeled by a pharmacy physician stating the medication and the dosage. So you've got to bring it in the right uh, prescription that it came in. 26, students that interfere in class, how many times? Three. Three times will be removed from, from the classroom. 27, Westside High School does not allow students to use or possess any tobacco products, tobacco paraphernalia, including electronic cigarettes. Students will receive disciplinary consequences and any such products will not be returned. They will be destroyed. Number 28, students using the bathroom must use the bathroom in their building. Students are not allowed to go to another building to use the bathroom. Your restroom privileges will be revoked if you go to other hallways or other buildings. Number 29, students are not allowed to bring, are not allowed to have anyone bring food. Uh, and drop it off up front in the parking lot anyway. You can't have outside food delivered. Students are also not allowed to have outside vendors such as DoorDash, Grubhub, any of those uh, vendors um, bring food and have it delivered. Vendors will be turned away and the school is not going to be responsible for loss of food or payment due to them being turned away. Um, and then number 30, the last one. Students must have an ID when they arrive to school. If they do not have an ID, they must get a temporary ID. Students must wear their own ID and it cannot be defaced or have stickers on it. Um, you cannot damage it and it must be on the outside. Uh, I know we went through a lot. Uh, those of you that are new still may have questions. Talk to your teachers. If your teachers don't have an exact answer for you, come find an administrator. We hope that you have a, a wonderful school year. We know that we will. Uh, look forward to, to seeing all of you, uh, all of you, sometime during the day. Have a good one.